that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was no killed. Way. In July 2015, shortly after the airing of season 7, it was announced that the second ever season of All Stars was going to begin filming very soon. It's speculated that the season began filming in mid-August of 2015 and would end up finishing almost halfway through September of 2015. Now back then, spoilers for the show were nowhere near as accurate as they are now. What I mean by this is that most of the time, fans had to do their own investigating to find clues as to how the season was going to play out. One of the popular methods being to dissect every scene in the super trailer for the season and see which queens had the most amount of looks featured. I mentioned this because All Stars 2 would end up having one of the biggest leaks of spoilers for any season at a time, which was largely blamed on Alaska. In this video, I'm going to be talking about All Stars 2, bringing up some interesting things that happened over the airing of the season and how Alaska would ultimately win the crown despite breaking the rules of her NDA. But first, let's hear a message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by our friends at Scentbird. If you didn't already know, Scentbird is a monthly subscription-based company that delivers a customized selection of fragrances at your door so that you can go out smelling like a beautiful drag queen yourself. Perfumes nowadays are super expensive, so having an affordable option like Scentbird can be a game changer. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance every month for just $17. Scentbird carries brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, as well as indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. So since the holidays are around the corner, you should consider buying something for one of your fellow Drag Race friends. I suggest getting the North Atlantic Right Whale by Sanctuary, or Bespoke by Joseph Aboud. I tried both these scents and they honestly made me feel very avant-garde, which is what I've been looking for these days. The scents come packaged in these amazingly designed perfume vials that adds a lot of spark to your experience when you're getting ready. Each vial has a lot of product inside them and you really only need one or two sprays for people to notice. I mean, my first three Scentbird samples ended up lasting me a very long time. And I even used it to go out on a couple dates and was complimented for the fragrance I was wearing. Someone literally told me, quote, Oh wow, I can't believe you're wearing Scentbird. It smells so good. And I was like, you should use code GGAY for 55% off your order. Available in the United States and Canada. Shortly after All Stars 2 had concluded filming, it wouldn't take long before drama began to surface. Alaska had been dating someone for a while, and they must have had a really bad breakup because her ex would end up taking to Instagram to spoil the fans the entire elimination order for All Stars 2. This included statements such as Alaska winning the most amount of challenges or Adore Delano deciding to quit on episode 2, as well as the format shift where the top two of each week would lip sync for the chance to eliminate one of the queens who ended up in the bottom. Fans of Reddit were going crazy when this information was released because these spoilers seemed to be very credible given where it was coming from. Others thought that perhaps it was just Alaska's bitter ex-boyfriend making up lies to try to get her in trouble. So there was a large part of the fandom that was skeptical about the validity of the spoilers. Even Jasmine Masters was reacting on a live stream to fans telling her about the leaked information. Oh, Alaska cheated on him. Where you get this tea from? Uh, All Stars. Katia? Alaska and Detox in top three. Who Coco My Trees was the first to go. I heard that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine just done all the TV. I heard, I heard Coco went home first. Adore leaves midway. What? Ginger's on. What? Roxy comes in fourth. What? Oh, I know the producers that. Uh, oh, I know Theron and all them is pissed <laughs> off. There's also a mention that apparently Alaska felt that sending Coco home was racist. Whether or not that's true, Alaska did say at the beginning of episode 2 that had it been up to her, she would have chosen to send Jeremy Carey home. The statements also expressed that apparently Katya was strangely distant from the rest of the cast throughout filming, which Katya says was due to being stressed by the stakes of the competition. Plus, in some of the behind-the-scenes videos, you can kind of tell she wanted her space. 
Now, Alaska's ex-boyfriend did a lot more than just leak spoilers for All Stars 2. He would go on to post on Instagram some very private photos, videos, and text messages between him and Alaska. There was also rumors that he stole Alaska's passport so that she wouldn't be able to attend her gigs. The ex-boyfriend claimed that Alaska had cheated on him while they were both still together, with Alaska later admitting to it, prompting the whole breakup. Moving on to the actual filming of the show, as you know, when the queens arrive in Los Angeles, they are first sequestered into hotel rooms, and every morning they get transported in a van that takes them all the way to the studio where they will film the show. For All Stars 2, there was so much hype that there was at one point fans stalking the queens outside their hotel rooms which posed the challenge for production to keep things under wraps. Although it's important to note that the production of Drag Race tends to change filming locations every couple years. Once the promo for All Stars 2 was officially released in June of 2016, a new era of Drag Race had officially began. Many people at the time sort of felt bad for the queens from season 8, because their season had just aired and was quickly buried in terms of relevance since the fanbase was now focused on All Stars 2. Which is sort of funny to look back on, considering nowadays we have like two seasons airing at all times of the year. Anyway, the season received a lot of promo during this time period, and they even did an interview with Raven Simone, who proclaimed herself to be a super fan of the show, only for her to accidentally reveal in the middle of the interview that she thought all of the queens in the cast had previously won their original season, and that this was the first ever all-winners cast. What is your advice on how to become an all-star? That's kind of like double-ended, right? Because you guys won a season prior and you're back. I guess, how is the process to get on the show? And how do you win? Is it just a throw something on the wall and see if it sticks? Or do you really have to listen to ruin the panelists so they can see the growth that goes on? We don't know how to win. None of us won. We all lost our seasons. Yeah, <laughs> true. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'm glad you're such a big fan. I think everybody is a winner. <laughs> Thank you. No, seriously, I'm friends with most of the people that didn't win. I'm like, you should have won, so it doesn't matter. You won a my <laughs> um Shortly before the season started, this picture of Alaska was the first image to be leaked to the public, which left the fans online gagging for more. Anyway, on August 2016, the first episode of All Stars 2 finally aired. And with that, the world got to see the redemption of Roxy Andrews, who went from being hated by the fans for being a villain on season 5 to changing their minds with her great burlesque performance. The world also got to see Tatiana defy everyone's expectations, with her hilarious spoken word performance of the same parts. A fun fact is that for the talent show, Jeremy Carey was originally planning on doing an impersonation of Gollum from the Lord of the Rings. I was gonna recite I Have a Dream as Gollum. Why did you do this to me? Like, oh I was gonna do the whole, like... <laughs> it was so good. Needless to say, by the end of the episode, Roxy Andrews and Tatiana would end up being the top two of the week, with Roxy Andrews winning the lip sync and choosing to eliminate Coco Montrees. In Coco's elimination interview, she said that she wasn't expecting Roxy to eliminate her because they were both from the same original season. So, she expected some loyalty. After the episode's airing, Coco said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that she had absolutely no resentment towards Roxy, with quote, I think if I was much younger, maybe it would have affected me differently. But I'm older, so I cherish my friendships and I don't give up on them when a decision like that is made. Roxy and I have a great friendship. So based on this interview, it kind of seemed that they were both still on good terms. That being said, a couple days after this interview, Coco ended up sending out a series of tweets that seemed to be shading Roxy's decision to eliminate her. On September 4th, 2016, Coco tweeted, quote, Some people sell out family and friends for fame and a little fortune. Knowing who these people are helps you evaluate intentions accurately. Thanks, Rue. Or, quote, Fame comes with a huge price, and some of you took out second and third loans and will still never be able to pay them off. Fame debt high credibility score low. Roxy Andrews responding by confirming that her financial status is doing perfectly fine, and that she's unbothered about the drama. 
Coco felt that Roxy chose to eliminate her because she viewed Coco as a threat. She also says that if the roles had been reversed, Coco would have never sent Roxy home. By the airing of episode 2, it was pretty much confirmed that Alaska's ex-boyfriend was unfortunately telling the truth. Since Adore did in fact end up quitting and Alaska won her first challenge thanks to her performance on the Snatch Game, where she played the character of Mae West who had actually been suggested by Alaska's ex-boyfriend while she was getting ready for the show. Another fun fact is that Ginger Minj originally wanted to play Ross Matthews for Snatch Game but production didn't allow her to do it. She was also asked to compete on All Star 4 and 5, but would end up rejecting the invitations because she didn't feel comfortable coming back. By the end of the episode, Alaska would win the lip sync for your legacy, and chose to eliminate Tatiana. Now, despite all the spoilers being true, it didn't stop the season from still being entertaining. After all, on episode 3, things would really start to spice up when Alyssa Edwards won her first challenge but would end up choosing to eliminate Ginger Minj. This was a huge gag, because Ginger Minj had just become a runner-up for the season 7 crown, and actually did a really good job in the challenge. But due to having a bad runway, she was justifiably placed in the bottom two. Katya, on the other hand, had done a not-so-memorable job with her performance of Princess Diana which fans blamed on the production of the show. Nevertheless, the consensus among the queens seemed to be that overall, Katya had done the worst on that specific week and she should have gone home. But Alyssa decided to take into consideration that Katya had just won a challenge the episode prior, and would ultimately save her because of it. In a way, fans brushed up the fact that the elimination was somewhat unfair because Katya was a fan favorite. Yet it's undeniable that the quality of the competition would have been diminished had Katya gone home on this episode. Which could have very well happened since Detox did choose to eliminate her. Now, while a lot of the spoilers for this season did end up coming true, there was some of the information that the fans did in fact get wrong. One of them was a rumored elimination order where Kokomon Trees still went home first but returned to the competition after a door quit only to end up in the bottom two where Katya chose to eliminate Coco again over Alyssa Edwards. Or the speculation that Kelly Mantle was officially part of the cast. Adore was also rumored to have quit the show because she got into a fight with some of the season 5 girls, feeling that they had an upper hand in the competition because they were all from the same original season. The only thing that was a genuine surprise to the fans was that while everyone knew Tatiana would be returning to the competition, people didn't know that Alyssa Edwards would also be coming back too. Another interesting thing to note is that in the middle of filming the season, production had to let Alyssa Edwards leave the set so she could go rehearse for her MTB performance alongside Miley Cyrus, which featured many different queens from the show. It was pretty iconic at the time since it was one of the few moments where mainstream pop culture crossed paths with RuPaul's Drag Race. On All Stars 2 Episode 4, the runway theme would be 2-in-1 looks. While in the process of getting ready, Jeremy Carey helped almost every single queen in the workroom with some final touches to their runway outfits. But the edit didn't show any of it, presumably because they didn't want to have scenes that made Jeremy look like a good person since he was the villain of the season. By the end of this episode, Alaska would win her second challenge and would controversially choose to eliminate Alyssa Edwards over Roxy Andrews. Which is when the fans started to slowly get annoyed at Alaska's decisions. On All Stars 2 Episode 5, the Revenge of the Queens episode officially took place. It featured all of the eliminated queens competing for a spot to return to the competition. It's on this episode that Jeremy Carey apparently told off production in a heated argument asking them to kick her off the show, largely due to knowing they were gonna let Alyssa Edwards come back to the competition. And so, by the end of it, Alyssa Edwards and Tatiana both won the challenge and each chose to eliminate Jeremy Carey. Which brings us to All Stars 2 Episode 6, where things really started to go south for Alaska's reputation among the fanbase because Alaska would end up winning her fourth challenge and yet again chose to eliminate Tatiana, despite the general consensus being that Roxy should have gone home. This would end up fueling a bunch of hate towards her due to her decision not only to eliminate Alyssa Edwards but to eliminate Tatiana two times. Although despite the fanbase commenting on her social media as the emoticon of a snake, Alaska doubled down on her decision to eliminate Tatiana and Alyssa. <laughs> Choices. 
The amount of hate Alaska received would prompt her to capitalize off of the hate by rebranding herself as the Queen of Snakes. She essentially began to troll the people that were trolling her, because the people that were spamming her social media with the emoticon of a snake were now inadvertently promoting her new brand. Taylor Swift would do a similar branding tactic a year later with her comeback music video for Look What You Made Me Do. I'm not saying she was inspired by Alaska, but I'm also not not saying she was inspired by Alaska. Anyway, Alaska went from being a fan favorite to being super hated, but her decision to capitalize off the snake brand really changed the way some of the fans perceived her. When All Stars 2 Episode 7 came along and the bottom three was revealed to be between Alaska, Roxy, and Alyssa, it was honestly the most intense elimination round of the whole season. It's on this episode where Alaska would throw her infamous tantrum that was actually a lot worse than what was shown. They ended up cutting out some parts of it. I was the like, uncut version I, was of the like tantrum? I can't believe that we put ourselves through this. We stand up in a line on a stage <laughs> so people behind a desk can tell us what the f is wrong with us. What's wrong with us? This is so stupid. <laughs> you know? It's during this that Alaska tried to bribe Detox with $10,000 if she let her stay in the competition for another week. After the airing of the season, Alaska ended up donating $5,000 to a snake refuge while also donating $5,000 to the Trans Kids Liberation Project under Detox's name. And to officially memorialize this era of her life, Alaska would end up getting a tattoo of a snake on her arm. Essentially, Alaska came into All Stars 2 with one goal in mind, which was to win. She didn't want to give the showrunners any content that they could later edit out of context to use against her. So she tried to show a limited amount of emotion and was careful with every single thing she said. Months after the airing of the All-Stars 2 finale, Alaska mentioned that someone had told her that if it wasn't for her breakdown, she wouldn't have ended up winning the season. In regards to her breakdown, there's a lot of speculation on whether Alaska's reaction was truly genuine, or whether she wanted to provide some vulnerability for the judges. But according to Alaska, it was real, and that it was the only moment the whole season where she was truly being genuine about her feelings. By the All-Stars 2 finale, the world got to see the Riju Rochu performance, which to this day is engraved in the pop culture of the franchise. By the end of it, RuPaul had to eliminate Roxy Andrews, since no one else had the heart to do it. And so Katya, Detox, and Alaska were the top three queens of the season. They would each subsequently be filmed winning. Many fans genuinely believed that Alaska was not going to end up winning the season because despite having the best track record of the top three, they felt that she had played a very dirty game. Along with that, her ex-boyfriend had leaked all the information for the season an entire year before everything aired. But ultimately, Alaska found out she won All-Stars 2 a couple weeks before the airing of the finale. This was because they filmed a reunion ahead of time, so producers just told them who the winner was. After the finale of All-Stars 2 aired, Alaska released the song and music video for The T, which was a complete masterpiece. For starters, it was packed with so many references from that year, such as Alaska stating that she sometimes does have a drink or two despite publicly stating that she was sober after the airing of season 5. In regards to sharing needles, by this point they had been broken up for a couple of years. According to Alaska, she cheated on Sharon with another guy, but they've learned from the past and grown from it. And just in case this needed to be said, the ex-boyfriend that leaked the spoilers was not Sharon Needles. By this point, Alaska had long since broken up with Sharon and was dating someone else. In conclusion, Alaska played a pivotal role in the way All Stars 2 played out, both because of her decisions throughout the competition as well as her ex-boyfriend leaking the entire elimination order a full year before the season aired. I'm really grateful that I was able to be a part of the fan base that got to experience the season as it was airing. It felt so magical and legendary back then and it still feels the same way when I look back on it. So I really wanted to make this video to sort of encompass a lot of the stories surrounding the season as it aired. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video and helping the channel out. You can find all their links in the description below. I wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons. Matthew Burns, Renee Rojo, Edgar Allan Pup, Franny Fishsticks, Cayman Rider Fury, Emma Malander, and Azure. If you'd like to see your name on the screen, you can support me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at GreenGay. YT. Comment below what you guys thought about this video, and if you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can find the link in the description. I'll see you guys next time.